A drug which could revolutionise the treatment of obesity by reducing body weight by almost a fifth within a year has been given the green light for use in the Ireland and other European countries. The uh, drug, uh, Wegovi, uh, which has been approved by the European Medicines Agency, involves the patient getting a once-a-week jab to suppress their appetite. Uh, we're joined now by uh, GP Dr Mick Crotty, who's an obesity, obesity specialist at the My Best Weight Clinic. Good morning to you, Doctor. Thanks for joining us. Not at all. Thanks very much for having me today. Um, is there a precedent here? Do we use any other uh, drugs um, to suppress appetite uh, currently, or is this the first? Uh, so at the moment, there's three different medications that are licensed for managing um, excess weight and obesity. One of those medications is a prequel to this new one that's available, um, one called liraglutide. Um, so this kind of family of medications were developed for diabetes, but what we noticed was they're highly effective in managing weight. Um, so essentially, these are medications that mimic a hormone, a fullness hormone we have in our body. Uh, so they act on areas, subconscious areas of our brain that regulate hunger and fullness so that we kind of turn down the volume on people's biological drive towards food because we know that, you know, people who are living with excess weight and obesity it's not because of a lack of willpower it's not because of motivation this is a complex medical issue and predominantly centered in the brain um, so these are these medications are kind of going to revolutionize management of weight long term because they're effective they're safe and, and really you know they mean that we're treating this like any other medical condition whether it be blood pressure or cholesterol or asthma uh, and would these uh, injections be available to, you know, you, I presume you don't want them, not you don't want them, you want them to be given to people whose health is at risk, you know, and obviously we're told we have to control our weight. But in other words, if someone fancies losing a few pounds, this is not what we're talking about here. This is with, with, with uh, This is for people who have a condition because of their weight, at least one condition. Exactly. So they, these are not cosmetic aesthetic medications. These are not to drop a few pounds before we go on holidays. They're, they're not a new diet kind of pill. These are long term medications for people who are living with excess weight. And when that weight is having a negative impact on their health. So whether it be their psychological health, their functional or mechanical health or metabolic health, if somebody's weight is affecting their health long term, then these are medications like blood pressure medications, like asthma medications, like depression medications. So, you know, these are not intended to be kind of, you know, the, the latest, greatest slimming tool. Um, and really, you know, we're not trying to, you know, just shrink people to fit into society's ideas of, of beauty or aesthetics. These are medical treatments on prescription only for people who have a negative impact on their health from weight. And we have to bear in mind that not every person living in a bigger body is going to have, you know, health impacts from their weight and those people should just continue you know living their life but if if somebody's health is impaired then then we can improve that and really it's it's not about losing weight it's about gaining health yeah and and uh, obesity is uh, uh, uh as it's been described locally here as it is a disease i think you're you're of the same view it, it's almost unique i can't think of anything else where there's almost two conversations going on there's like the conversation you might have uh, whereby you know you see the uh, the 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 implications of it on someone's health, and you would have no qualms, I'm sure, if someone sat in front of you saying, "If you don't do this, you are the consequences could be that." But then there's a, another conversation where there's about uh, you know body positivity, and you can't talk about weight, and there's just there's, I don't think there's another conditional disease like that. Yeah, and it's, it, it is. I totally agree. It's, it's a very controversial area. We have kind of the intersection of kind of diet culture and this kind of everybody striving to be thinner, um, you know, and, and the negative effect that can have on people psychologically and, and you know, physically. Um, you know, this is not about diet culture. This is not about kind of losing weight, you know, for aesthetics. This is this is treating people for whom weight is affecting their health. Uh, and really, you know, I totally agree with you, you know, by, you know, when we're having a conversation about weight, we need to do it in a non judgmental way we need to broach it sensitively you know it needs it needs we need to ask people's permission to talk about their weight because it's it's a very sensitive topic um, but if we do it in the right way and if we approach it in the right way it's very acceptable to people and, and many people you know the studies are showing that you know the vast majority of people want their doctor to talk to them about weight 
but we shouldn't be doing the old fashioned blame and shame, telling them just to go away and eat less and move more. Telling somebody who's living with excess weight to eat less and move more long term or diet and exercise is, is like telling somebody with depression to cheer up. Yeah, it's a gross pull yourself together, you just don't do it. Yeah, yeah uh, it's, but we've it's, learned that though, you see, uh, uh, as it relates to people's mental health, but it takes a long time to, to learn that conversation. Then, uh, and I'm not going to digress from what we invited you on to talk about, but then if that is the case, if we, 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 we don't want to, to, to judge people or speak to them like that, then do we need to stop uh, like magazines platforming, you know, larger uh, weighted people as if to say, no, it is normal, be who you are? You know, is that part then of uh, a responsible conversation about someone's health, if that makes sense? Yeah. So, so you mentioned the kind of healthy in any size or body positivity, and I'm I'm all about kind of body positivity. So, so again, this comes back to me. You know, the definition of the chronic disease of obesity mm. is excess or abnormal fatty tissue. But can I, in any health, but, yeah, but in in any circumstances, could I walk around full stone overweight with there not being uh, health impacts? Yeah, it's. It, it, it's certainly possible, um, and certainly they talk about this metabolically healthy obesity. Um, I, I think long term, if somebody's living in a bigger body, they're statistically at risk of certain medical conditions, but it's not a foregone conclusion that they're going to suffer with all of those. Nor so, is it, I so presume, again, that someone who seems to be the perfect weight, that they are healthy. Exactly. So I, I think there's, there's a discussion here around separating health and weight you know there are many people that i treat who are living in a bigger body but they make very good food decisions they're very physically active you know they're very conscious of their health you know they're not smoking whereas there are other people who are technically within a normal you know whatever that means kind of weight category who who have high blood pressure or diabetes or other medical issues and it's very very variable depending on our physiology and our genetics. So so really it comes back to me as this this is for people whose health is impaired mm. um, and it's about improving their health long term. It's not about achieving a certain number on a scales or a certain size or a certain you know body mass index. This is about, you know, we know that uh, if somebody has an impairment of health, a five to 10% reduction in weight is very effective in improving their health long term. And this uh, drug in trials has shown uh, an average of uh, 17%, which is really quite significant. It's a weekly injection, but presumably it will have to be uh, used in the real world before the likes of the HSC would consider making it available on a medical card or, or part of any uh, reimbursement scheme. That would be a wee bit down the line. So how, who Who's going to have access to this? Where will it be administered? Yeah, so the, the challenge of this is, like you said, it's not reimbursed. Um, so it's people are paying for this out of pocket. The, the new medication that's just been approved, physically it's going to be probably you know four to six months before it's available in Irish pharmacies. It'll be on prescription only um, and it will be kind of you know available then. We're using the exact same ingredient medication at lower doses for diabetes at the moment, um, you know, safely and, and effectively. So, you know, many people are using this for diabetes and, and having a good um, uh, improvement in their health. And as I said, there are other medications licensed for weight, but physically this one will be available probably in, in four to six months time. Um, and we really need to fight to have this reimbursed. We know the healthcare economics of this are make ultimate sense. You know, why should we wait for people to have kind of complicated and, and more severe issues before we intervene. Um, but so, if that's so again, the case that, on that, why should someone have to have um, at least one weight-related complication? I mean, I presume uh, pretty much most GPs, you know, is the risk, say, for instance, of developing type 2 diabetes, is that uh, one weight-related complication? So, in other words, there's a million people in Ireland that are classed as obese, theoretically there could be an argument made for uh, all of those to be receiving this drug? Yeah, and I think, you know, certainly in, in my practice, you know, we know that 60% of the Irish population are living with overweight or obesity, so it's not feasible for everybody to be treated. Uh, if we look at kind of the, the approval for this medication, it's actually a body mass index greater than 30 or greater than 27 with a health-related medical issue. So, you know, again, it's, it's coming back to that. But if I'm seeing somebody, I'm not basing it on their weight or on their BMI, I'm basing it on their health. You know, is this person going to improve their health by managing weight? Um, so, you know, I suppose this has to kind of, you know, be targeted towards those who would benefit most from the medication initially. And they're the ones with the most impairment of health. Uh, but really, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think we should be, you know, intervening sooner to treat people before, you know, we know that our physiology and our biology defends a higher weight. So the higher our weight goes, 
that's where our brain feels is normal and it will try to get us back to that weight. So why should we wait for people to be more severely affected mm -hmm. before intervening? So I completely agree with you, but I think on the licensing for this, I suppose they have to have some kind of guidelines. Yeah, for sure. Um, but but I mean, obviously we also, we, we, we unfortunately we still haven't got our head around the way, and I'm not talking necessarily about this specifically, but if we spend 10 euro in 2022 it avoids us spending 60 euro in 2027 but we we've never really made that financial decision for some peculiar reason yeah and it's 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 about investment in health and you can look across the health service and, and see this in, in so many other places but again in addition to reimbursing the medication there should be improved access towards bariatric surgery which is a, another fantastic treatment there should be you know um, funding of specialist weight management services with nutritional support psychological support you know physiotherapy occupational therapy you know this 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 isn't just a kind of you know one and done you know we treat other chronic diseases with this multidisciplinary approach uh, a holistic looking at the person you know not just a number on the scales uh, and and we should be doing that kind mm. of you know far far overweight and obesity. yeah but that goes back to um that goes back then to how we talk about this conversation in the round because you could ask 10 overweight people do you believe you have a disease and five might say yes and five might say no uh, and could, could make a legitimate argument uh, in both. You couldn't with other diseases. But anyway, finally, just in, in a couple of minutes, Doctor, if you don't mind, um, in terms of how it, someone emotionally deals with this then, you know, you talk about the suppression. Um, does it does it trigger anything else or does it all, the you know, the mind and body work it out, if, if you understand what I'm saying? Because yeah, obviously... So Go ahead. So the, I suppose the, the, you know, the underlying causes for why somebody might struggle with, you know, genetics are a huge factor. The genetics regulate how our brain controls hunger, fullness, and the reward from food. Lots of things in our environment, you know, whether it be sleep or stress or medications or trauma, lots of those things kind of exacerbate that further. So this goes to the biology. It treats the excess hunger. It treats the lack of fullness. It treats the hyperactive reward system in the brain so that we're turning down the volume on, on the biological drive. So that somebody who is, is experiencing this, you know, it is, if we turn down that biological drive, it's much easier for that person to make the choices they know they want to make. Uh, essentially, we're giving them the neurology of somebody else who doesn't struggle with weight, um, you know, because, you know, they don't lack motivation or willpower. Um, they're just constantly, you know, more at risk. So, you know, the way I kind of talk to patients is if, if somebody is genetically predisposed and biologically predisposed to take in 5% more food than their body needs, at each meal, if we take that over the course of thousands of meals, that person is going to struggle with weight. So, you know, this the the stigma and bias in society, this is not that people are eating rubbish and not exercising. This is a case mm -hmm. that, you know, in the environment we live in, this is this is okay. high risk. Very you know, funny. In the, in the first case, anyone using this will have to pay for it. Isn't that how at it the works? moment okay. it's, at the moment it's not reimbursed, so they'll have to pay out of pocket and it is expensive. It's and, and and very finally, um, I when I stopped smoking, I put on five stone. I'm so depressed. Last night alone, thinking on it all night. No sleep till six a.m. Um, I also have lupus. Can hardly walk with weight. That person would qualify for this. Uh, for, for, for this, as, as much Absolutely. as we can so, say over a Zoom call. Yeah. But yeah, that's the type so in, of. In general, like, like we said, you know, if there's a psychological impairment, if their function and day to day, you know, mechanical health is impaired, or if they've got a metabolic impairment. Mm. Then absolutely that, that, person that person would probably hit at least two, two, uh, mm. two, two. Okay, listen, that's uh, that's uh, very informative. Thanks for so much of your time this morning. By the way, take care of yourself. That's uh, Doctor uh, Mick Crotty.